guys i'm back with the video of histopathology drawing of mucosal this time it's delayed sorry about it shall continue with it here are the eosin hematoxylin and lead pencil i have drawn two circles one is for the mucus retention phenomenon mucosal and the other one is the mucus for the mucus extravasation type of cyst so let's just quickly learn these two drawings uh, we as we have learnt in the theory part in the previous video of mine please have a look at it before coming here here is the epithelial surface because these mucoceles are seen in the lower lip most commonly if they are of traumatic origin and here is the epithelium so we draw the epithelium like this it's a stratified squamous epithelium so we quickly draw the all the cells of this epithelium we make the nucleus in these cells now yes we have drawn the nucleus in all the cells so epithelium is ready and underneath that we have the mucus retention cyst so let's draw the cystic epithelium in the sub epithelial connective tissue so we draw a cystic lining which is kind of a it can be a bilayered duct ductal epithelium or sometimes stretched monolayer of epithelium generally ductal epithelium will have a basal cell layer and another layer lining the lumen so i've just drawn two layers of cells which are stretched now they don't have that uh, proper anatomical sorry the morphological features that generally when they're in healthy duct uh, so we just have the flattened cells that is the cystic epithelium now we make the salivary uh, acini in the vicinity of the cyst these are the mucus acini okay and another a duct which is the feeder duct so we draw the acinar cells Here is the ductal uh, area. We'll draw few more acini, mucus acini are mostly tubular acini, and we draw the cells inside. We draw the nucleus in these cells now. Now we draw the nucleus inside the feeder duct. What is a feeder duct? I have explained in the theory part of my video. Please have a look at it. And now the nuclei in the acinar component. The mucus acini will have flattened nucleus in the basal third of the cell. Now we have the acini. We shall make the connective tissue component in the in and around this area. Now we have the subepithelial connective tissue with fibro fibrous uh, fibril collagen fibers. We shall first make the ground substance. In that, we start fill the filling the fibers, fibroblasts, blood vessels, few inflammatory cells, etc. Now we make blood vessels, collagen fibers. Collagen fibers are kind of condensed around the cystic area because they get compressed around it and we make few fibroblasts too now we make 
nucleus in all these cells that we have drawn. The endothelial cells, nucleus inside the fibroblasts. Now we make few inflammatory cells. So we do this and we will fill the inner portion with the mucin. There is pulling of the mucin inside the duct. Mucin takes up slightly basophilic stain. So we just mix both pencils and make a shading like this. And we put inflammatory cells inside too. We may even see few mucinophages. These are macrophages which are granular which have come to eat up the mucin because they consider the mucin as foreign now. So this is the mucus extravasation cyst. Sorry, mucus retention cyst. So I shall start labeling the mucus retention cyst. We have oral epithelium. Oral stratified squamous epithelium if you want to write, you can write. And you can write the connective tissue stroma. Then we have the mucus epithelial lining of the cyst. The cyst, the mucus acini in the vicinity. This is the feeder duct. Then we have the cystic lumen with pulled mucin and we have inflammatory cells and mucifages. Inflammatory reaction in this cyst is less compared to the extravasation type where there is no epithelial lining around this cyst. This is about mucus retention cyst. Now next we will draw the mucus extravasation type of cyst. Now we shall start drawing mucus extravasation cyst. So we draw another epithelium just like how we did for mucus retention cyst. The cyst uh, epithelium about the cystic area will show some amount of atrophy because it's stretched. Now we make the nucleus in these cells. We are done with the drawing of epithelium. Now we draw the cyst. Here we do not see an epithelial lining because it's a extravasation phenomenon. So we drew the subepithelial connective tissue first, and then we start drawing the drawing the granulation tissue. So we do the condensed connective tissue component. In, around this cystic space this will be the cystic space so around this we will do the condensed connective tissue capsule and this will be the ground substance we do the lead vessels in the subepithelial connective tissue, fibroblasts, all that in the subepithelial connective tissue. We'll come to the components of the capsule later. We have the collagen fibers 
in the normal looking subepithelial connective tissue. Now around the, this will be the granulation tissue, the granular tissue, granulation tissue will have blood vessels, they will have small inflammatory cells. Collagen fibers, fibroblasts, and then the mucus salivary gland in the vicinity of the cyst with the feeder duct which is feeding this cyst. We draw the mucus asini. We also draw the ductal epithelium with cuboidal cells. Now we draw the nucleus in all the cells that we have drawn. We start with the salivary asini part first the duct we draw the nucleus in then the mucus asini with flattened nuclei once we finish this we will draw the connective tissue stroma else everywhere else so this is the round substance we do the nucleus in them we have blood vessels in the normal looking stroma just below the epithelium fibroblasts in them we can actually draw the spindle shaped proper fibroblasts okay we draw the nucleus in them Then we draw the nucleus in the blood vessels in the granulation tissue or the condensed connective tissue capsule around the cystic lumen. Then we draw the nucleus inside the inflammatory cells with which we drew. Here are the mucophages, which are macrophages of the salivary mucosal. We will draw the fibroblasts, longer ones and more of condensed this time the nucleus in them now we'll do the mucin pooling inside the cystic area we'll do with a bit of eosinophilic pencil eosin pencil and also with the hematoxylin pencil pencil because mucin takes up slightly basophilic stain. Now this is the mucus extravasation phenomenon. We will just darken the granulation tissue area, condensed connective tissue capsule. Now we can just label this. We can also actually make the mucinous area slightly bluish because the lumen will be filled with mucin which is bluish the same we can do with the mucus extravasation cyst as well now we shall start labeling the uh, drawing now we shall start labeling mucus extravasation cyst extra vasation cyst this is the cyst now we have this oral epithelium we can as I said write as stratified squamous epithelium next we have the subepithelial connective tissue we have condensed connective tissue capsule
cystic lumen with sorry with pulled mucin condensed connective tissue capsule of granulation tissue also you can write next we label the feeder duct it's very important to identify the feeder duct and remove it during surgery because this is what keeps the fueling of the cyst these are the minor mucus acini or minor salivary acini of mucus type next we have the inflammatory cells that is the mucy phages and other inflammatory cells this completes the labeling of mucus extravasation cyst of salivary glands hope this was helpful please practice these diagrams and this will definitely help you in drawing better in the exams and later to to understand the concept of mucus seal here is the mucus retention type of cyst and here is the mucus extravasation type hope you understand the difference between both these cysts thank you for watching this video please share like and comment i will be back with another histopathology diagram soon thank you and subscribe to my channel bye see you all soon